This book is a chapter book and it is called The Hero's Guide to Saving Your Kingdom. It's by Christopher Healy and it is the first book in a three book series. We're just gonna go with this one. We'll see how it goes. Now, you probably think you know your fairy tale characters, right? Like you know who Cinderella is and you know who Sleeping Beauty is and you know that there's Prince Charmings, there's all those guys. Um, you're pretty familiar with how the fairy tale world works. Well, you're gonna find that maybe some of the things you think you know, they're not all entirely true. You're gonna find out what it's really all about. So we'll start here with the hero's guide. Starting off with a prologue. This means an introduction. Things that you don't know about Prince Charming. Prince Charming is afraid of old ladies. Didn't know that, did you? Don't worry. There's a lot you don't know about Prince Charming. Prince Charming has no idea how to use a sword. Prince Charming has no patience for dwarfs. Prince Charming has an irrational hatred of capes. Some of you may not even realize that there's actually more than one Prince Charming and that none of them are actually named Charming. No one is. Charming isn't a name, it's an adjective. An adjective is a describing word, right? So um, there's, you could be Prince Charming or maybe if we were gonna use another adjective word, you could be Prince Cranky or you could be Prince um, Sleepy. That's not actually a name. That's just a way to describe somebody. But don't blame yourself for your lack of Prince Charming based knowledge. Blame the lazy bards. You see, back in the day, back in the day, bards and minstrels were the world's only real source of news. It was they who bestowed fame upon people. So you might be wondering, what is a bard? What's a minstrel? Well, those are the people who would walk between different towns and different cities and tell everybody the news. So since there wasn't any TV and there wasn't any radio and there wasn't any internet, how are you gonna find anything out? Well, these bards and minstrels would go around and tell everyone what had just happened, what the big stories of the day were. And a lot of time they'd sing them too, because it's, you know how it's easier to remember something if it's in a rhyme? So sometimes they would sing them as well, sing those pretty songs. And so anytime someone came to town to sing a song, you'd be like, okay, it's the news of the day. I've got to go check it out. It's like, instead of if you're watching the five o'clock news, your parents, they were like, okay, we have to go listen to the new song that just came out. That's what the barter minstrel is, coming and singing a song. So since they were the ones who were telling the stories, they were the ones who sculpted any hero's or villain's reputation. Whenever something big happened, a damsel was rescued, a dragon was slain, a curse was broken, the royal bards would write a song about it. Like I said, they'd write a song and their wandering minstrels would perform that tune from land to land, spreading the story across multiple kingdoms. But the bards weren't keen on details. They didn't think it was important to include the names of the heroes who did the rescuing, dragon slaying, or curse breaking. They just called all those guys Prince Charming. It didn't even matter to the bards whether the person in question was a truly daring hero, like Prince Liam, who battled his way past a bone-crushing, fire-blasting, magical monster. He said, that sounds pretty brave. To free a princess from an enchanted sleeping spell, or just some guy who happened to be in the right place at the right time, like Prince Duncan, who also woke a princess from a sleeping spell, but only because some dwarfs told him to. No, those bards gave a man the same generic name, whether he nearly died, like Prince Gustav, who was thrown from a 90-foot tower, tower when he tried to rescue Rapunzel, or simply impressed a girl with his dancing skill, like Prince Frederick, who wowed Cinderella at a royal ball. If there was anything that Liam, Duncan, Gustav, and Frederick all had in common, it was that none of them were very happy about being a Prince Charming. Their mutual hatred of that name was a big part of what brought them together. Not that teaming up was necessarily the best idea for these guys. If we were to peek ahead to say chapter 20, we would see our heroes in a small mountain town called Flargstarg. It's a fun word to say, you should try saying that. Flargstarg, fun town to live in, I guess. Sitting in just about the worst tavern in all of creation, the Stumpy Boarhound. The Stumpy Boarhound is the kind of dank that's another word for kind of dark and gloomy, maybe a little soggy and slimy, a dank and miserable place where pirates and assassins play cards while plotting their next despicable crimes, which often involve robbing the tavern itself. 
it's not the kind of place where you would expect to find even one Prince Charming, let alone four. And yet in chapter 20, there they all are. Liam, bruised and soot-stained, with fish bones in his hair, Gustav, in charred and dented armor, massaging his bald, bright red scalp, Frederick, covered with enough dirt to make you think he had just crawled out of a grave, and Duncan, with a big bump on his forehead and wearing, is that a nightshirt? Oh, and there are about 50 armed thugs surrounding their table, all of whom seem eager to smash the princes into paste. Of course, by chapter 20, you can't fault the princes for looking like wrecks. They're lucky to be alive after all their run-ins with, let's see, a witch, the giant, a bandit, um, well, you'll see, basically. The fact that they're about to get into a major brawl is none too surprising, considering the kind of week these princes have just had. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before we reach that turning point night at the Stumpy Boarhound, we need to head back to the peaceful kingdom of Harmonia, where the whole adventure, or mess, depending on who you ask, began. We have to go back to when Prince Frederick managed to lose Cinderella. How do you lose a person?